Hey everybody, welcome to episode 39 of Making It. I'm Bob Claggett, here with Jimmy Duresta. Hello. And David Picciuto. Hello. How's it going? Guys? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Happy to be home. Yeah, Long yeah. too. No, no doubt. We all had a an excellent time. We'll talk about that in a in a few minutes, I think. Um I want to say a special thank you before we get going to Tobias Ferber. I hope I'm saying that right, Tobias. And if not, just know that we are very grateful for a donation you gave us this week. Yes. Awesome. Um, Also, I want to thank the guys from Patreon, everybody from Patreon who supports the show. It's really fantastic. Um, And also, especially uh, Luis Gonzalez and Jeremy White. They're our top patrons over there, and we're grateful for them, for their support. And um, yeah. And just, you know, we're grateful for everybody that listens. We, in in Kansas City, we had a lot of people, a whole oh, lot of people come up and say that they love the podcast. And Yeah, that that's great. good to hear. Yeah. It just makes you feel good. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so let's just get it out of the way. David has not been doing anything, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I watched you. I watched you open your box of books. I did that. You did that's that. That's true. Yeah, let's talk about the books. Okay. Talk about the books. Yeah. So they got printed just in time for WIA. So the printer, not even the publisher, had to send them to Kansas City. And I got one carton. There were 52 books in that carton. And um, I gave uh, a couple people who deserved them. Um, like there was like four people. I gave four away, kept one for myself, and then sold the rest. Uh, oh, that's awesome! Yeah, and it was it felt so good to to sell out. Um, so I saw them for the very first time at the <laughs> booth. So Are you gonna didn't we film the reaction of you yes, opening the box? Yes, my my wife was like she wanted to see me open up the the box of books, and since they weren't being delivered to my home, she, um, she's like, you got to have somebody record it. So Bob recorded it on my phone. I got to show my wife, so she thanks you. And um, it was I, I, I saw it for the first time. It has a good feel to it. It's got a good smell to it, and they look awesome. Super happy, came out great. So I'm gonna have one more carton sent to my house that I will sell on my website. And um, I don't think I'm gonna have them at my house in time for the official release, which is tomorrow. Um, but I'll announce to everybody when I'll have them, and um, there'll be a limited signed copy edition and once those are gone i'm just going to direct everybody else to amazon so mm-hmm. yeah very happy Con- congratulations on it it really looks fantastic oh, right on thank you very much yes congratulations the photography and the editing looks really nice thank you yeah. i appreciate it photo editing it's but a complicated have- layout because you have all that like white background and yeah, I mean, well. the, the 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 they asked me if I wanted to do the layout, and I did say yes. And then I was a little overwhelmed at the time with all the stuff I had going on, and so then they actually took care of the layout, and I approved it, and it was they they did a fantastic job. And then so they just sent me like the InDesign templates, and I just filled them in. I took all the photography, I kind of wrote all the cut lines for the photos, and they kind of fixed my terrible grammar and and everything. So it was. A good collaboration between me and the publisher, or the publisher yeah. and I. So, <laughs> speaking of grammar, <laughs> speaking of grammar, right? <laughs> and uh, we're already getting started on the next book. Which, do um, oh, you, you remember me saying like I didn't, didn't really enjoy writing the book? Well, now I'm starting the next one. So I like, <laughs> I like punishment. <laughs> well, that's so, awesome, man. So, thanks. but you know, to our normal question. Have you been doing anything? Have you been Uh, making anything? uh, So I got home yesterday and I didn't do anything yesterday, but just relax. I got home late yesterday. And and so today I, if you, you might recall from last week's episode, my shop was a mess. I cleaned up the shop, put all the tools and machines back where they belong. So it is now usable. And then I started working on the designs for a new outfeed table for my table saw. And so I will be... Uh, working on that and completing that this week. I'm doing a video, of course, on it. Um, hopefully, that's out as early as next week. So, very cool. Did you see the cover of Fine Woodworking? They have a, an article on a really cool outfit table. It's just kind of post and beam kind of construction. No, no, no. I it's gotta on check the cover. I just happen to have the magazine sitting here. Oh yeah, I uh, I, I pay their whatever, whatever it's like four dollars a month to get the all the online articles. So, oh cool. Uh, yeah, I have to check that out. Thanks. Yeah, I get overwhelmed with the input, so I don't get to see it as often, or I don't get to suck it up as much as I want. 
there is lots of input these days between YouTube and websites yeah. and magazines and conferences. Yeah. 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 Well, when I got, I was in the car ride home. It took us 24 hours to get home. We, I met, uh, I met a fan at the show, uh, a cool dude named, named uh, Tracy. And we were talking and he said he had some wood for me because I told him I might want to do another axe restoration. And so he said, come to my house. So we met him at the flea market Sunday morning after the show. And then we went to his house, and he has a, a house full of wood drying. He has an incredible collection of axe heads and stuff. So we made a trade. So that was fun. I got to meet him and hang out with him for a little while. And then Dave and I got in the car, and it was literally 24 hours later by the time we hit New York. And it was a long, long drive. I developed a cold and a toothache on the drive. So oh, man. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit better right now. I'll go see the dentist tomorrow. And... uh but on the drive, I got a call from somebody who needed an emergency prototype. So I got home yesterday at 4, slept for a couple hours, woke up, and then had my meeting at 8 o'clock last night. I, I was uh, asked if I could make an emergency penguin. and uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry, last, what? <laughs> an emergency penguin for a prop. Maybe I might Instagram a couple pictures of it. Is that, a, is that a term I'm not aware of, or are we talking like a penguin? Like a wild... Oh, you don't know what an emergency penguin is? No. I don't have, Bob, do you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no he showed up he's he's a friend of mine he actually handles my website i talked about doug and sloan uh doug doug and sloan are uh they they take care of my website we're, we're, we're kind of in conversations about going going a little bit deeper and them handling you know clicks and hits and google ads and all kinds of stuff so my website might get a revamp and they're doing a commercial and they, so they needed a penguin for the commercial so they came with a, a little penguin that was like an inch tall. And they said, this is our reference. We need him to be 10 inches tall. So I made him this morning. I got up at 8 o'clock, went over to the shop, spun him on the lathe, added wings and a beak and eyeglasses to him and stuff. Not glasses, but eyeballs. And uh, I just delivered it. So that was my whole day today. I made an emergency penguin prototype for a commercial shoot. <laughs> did not film it. Did not have time. I literally delivered it in a Ziploc bag, like a large I have these like evidence bags I use for stuff. And he was like <laughs> stuck to the inside of the bag. The paint was still wet. So I had to peel them out of the bag. And uh, so they, they loved they love that they think it's totally doable, usable for what they need. I think we so. have the title of our show, right? What is it? Emergency Penguin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to, I didn't get like a good final shot of him because we were in such a rush. And then I dropped on the vest and I delivered it to Greenpoint. That's why I just, I told you guys I was in Brooklyn a minute ago. Nice. And uh, so, and I got back in time to, to hook up with you guys. So that's literally uh, got home from WIA, slept, met Doug, made Doug's penguin, delivered Doug's penguin, met you guys. So here we are. Wow! It seems like it's been just a whirlwind. Sounds like it. And you were in a whirlwind before you even left for WIA, right? Yeah. Oh God, it's been like one thing to another. I actually on the car ride home, I said to Dave, I said, I think when we get back to town, it's going to be kind of easy going. <laughs> and now I'm looking at all the things I keep forgetting to to address. So. Yeah, I have to get something in FedEx tonight for a fan, and uh, yeah, it's been tough. It's but you know it all comes together in the end. Everything's working out. Yeah, yeah, it has been a long, long <laughs> few days, uh, especially you know. So woodworking in America was awesome, and before that, I worked on a bunch of stuff, but I honestly cannot remember what it was. It was just <laughs> kind of like prep to leave town, you know. So last week was kind of scrambling. This week's going to be scrambling because I'm going to Atlanta Maker Fair. On Friday, and so I've got to. I haven't even started prepping for that, so I got to prep for that this week. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it was scramble last week. An awesome weekend in Kansas City. A ridiculous amount of time in an airport, and then I'm back to here <laughs> to do the same thing. You have to explain what was going on with that. Okay, so I think I got home faster than you, and I lived you further did. away. In a yeah, car. And you <laughs> drove, yeah. <laughs> you drove, yeah. <laughs> but I will say that I would I would not enjoy spending the same amount of time that I spent in an airport in a car. It would be miserable. So well, Dave and I had fun. We you should see the the amount of garbage I bought. I said I, I did I was doing my Snapchat, <laughs> and I said I just spent about two hundred dollars on stuff I'm going to throw out in a month. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we Snapchatted the whole way, and we we were goofing off. We started writing bits. We were, somebody wrote, somebody wrote me an email. I think it might have been Nick Henderson. He wrote me and said, "Because you guys seem like you're getting a little foggy out there. You better be careful and take naps." <laughs> <But> <laughs> and we were the whole way. We were, we were switching on and off. But that was fun. But then I noticed that you were stuck in the airport. You sent a picture out of like a cot or something that you were going to lay on? Yeah. So I, I got to Kansas City on time. Had some nice fellows drop me off at the airport. 
And uh, I, I, when I flew out there, I was going through Charlotte. So I got to the airport to leave, to come home. And in my mind, I just thought, yeah, I'm going through Charlotte. So I sat down at the right gate number, had my headphones in. And every time they come over the speaker, you know, I'm like listening to them. And they're like, gate change, blah, 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 blah. But it's never, it's always to another city. And so at one point I looked down and it was time. Like I should have already boarded. And I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm right here. It's okay. I'll, I'll run on. And there's no plane. Ah, like, you missed ah. it. So it turned out was that I was actually going back through Dallas, not through Charlotte. And so when they were saying all these gate changes over the thing, I wasn't listening because I heard Dallas and I was listening for Charlotte. And so it was totally my fault, right? <clears> oh, just, wow. That happened to me a me. couple months ago. I just I totally flaked on the, yeah. on the announcement and I, I got stuck. Yeah. So I missed the gate change and everybody in the entire weekend was awesome in the airports. The people that were working, it was just me. And I just made a mistake and was really frustrated with myself. But anyway, they got me to Dallas late, but there wasn't a flight back to Savannah until the next day. So I had to spend the night in the Dallas airport. No way. So you got home yesterday? I got home last night at nine o'clock. No (laughs) way. I got home at like three o'clock. Yeah. So it was, it was 31 hours of airport and airplane. Wow. We'll let everybody uh, know it's today is Tuesday, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I left on Sunday to come home. (laughs) So I spent the night in the airport. I I have found a cot just randomly stuck behind a chair somewhere. So I pulled that out and just hoped that it had been deloused at some point. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) hopped on that, slept a couple hours here and there. And, you know, and then the the airport started filling back up with people. So I couldn't sleep. So then I just kind of wandered around for hours and. It was just a you know being on standby, waiting for a flight. The flight didn't have any room, so I'd have to wait for the next one, and ended up going back through Charlotte and then back to Savannah. <laughs> so, but it's funny of all the people in the world, you had a Casey Neistat sighting. He said he skated by you. Yeah, I was uh, sitting Dallas. there, sitting there. As soon as I got to Dallas, sat down and was eating, talking to my wife on the phone, and I see somebody go by on a skateboard. And I'm like, oh look, somebody skated through the airport. Casey does that. And then I looked up and I'm like, oh that guy's hair is like Casey. Oh hey, that's Casey. <laughs> But me, I was carrying his camera and everything, doing the whole deal. So was he talking to himself on his camera when you saw him? No, no, he was just holding oh. it, and you can actually see it in the shot of his vlog where he's passing by. But That's I tweeted funny. at him, hoping he would be cool enough to, like, you know, hey, I'm in the airport too, and I could at least shake his hand. But never heard anything. <laughs> so he was stuck there apparently for a long time too. Yeah, he was stuck there for a while. But According to his vlog, didn't cross paths. But yeah, so I'm back here. Have stuff to do for this week to prep for Maker Fair. So. Yeah, I'm going to go to Pittsburgh Maker Fair in, uh, on the 10th. I think it's the 10th and the 11th, so it's the following weekend from this one. Um, if, I, if I was caught up more in my work, I'd go to this one, in, uh, this one in Connecticut, which is just a drive away from me, but I have too much to do this weekend to catch up. But um, today we're going to just uh, take a few minutes and just kind of do a wrap-up of woodworking in America, the wonderful weekend we all had. And uh, it was great. Dave and I hit town. I, I had no plans for a hotel or anything. It, it, we figured the worst case scenario, we would sleep in the car in a Walmart parking lot, 24-hour super center. And that's really what we planned on doing if, in case we could not find a room. But of course, we could just find a room just outside of town and drive in and out. So I parked my car in the, uh, in the driveway at the hotel. I walked in. I saw everybody for a few minutes. Actually, before anything, I went right up to the counter and I said, do you have a room? And the guy tapping on the keys for like what seemed like 25 minutes. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, yeah, I got a room. I said, for, for the, all three nights? He's like, yeah, I got a room. And uh, so he said the rate of 180 something dollars per night. And I just said, I, I never negotiate because I'm just, okay. I said, okay, great. Because to me, I was like, I don't have to get in the car and drive out of town. So I said, sure, great. And David goes, that's the best you could do. And then the guy slaps the keys for 10 more minutes. And he goes, <laughs> 130? And I was like, awesome. And Dave's like, yeah. So if Dave didn't pipe up and say anything, we would have paid full rate. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, <laughs> it was just, it's just as, as easy as that. And then uh, we got our room and then we went up and, and I got to meet everybody for the very first time at that bar upstairs. And uh, you guys had already, you guys were there, right? I met you all right there at that bar. You guys didn't come in the next day. It was yeah. like such a whirlwind for me. Yeah, we, we stayed somewhere else, but we went up to the bar in yeah. the hotel where the conference was and hung out and talked to everybody. It was a little hard to talk to you, Jimmy, because you were you were surrounded by a bunch of people. So I didn't really even have a chance to say hello. But I, I did get to talk to David for the first time ever in person. And that was fun. Oh, yeah. I'm really glad David came. It was sort of a last minute decision because uh, uh, I realized I didn't want to bring Taylor because I figured it would be kind of like a nerd fest of all of us just talking YouTube the whole time. I didn't want to bore her. <laughs> and uh, so I said to Dave, because I didn't know if he was going to be available because he's been going back and forth to Syracuse. I go, hey, you want to come? And he said, sure. So we shared the driving 
And, uh, and it was great to have him there, of course, because, you know, he's definitely part of the community now, without a doubt. And he, uh, he made a wonderful PSA, which mm. is, we could talk more about, but, uh, it's so good. He was one. And the car right there, he's like, he's like, I want to take the opportunity to film everybody for something. And I have this idea to do like this PSA about like anti-trolling. And so in the car, we brainstormed a bunch of different lines. And, and then when we got there, we were really just overwhelmed with meeting everybody and, and meeting Nick and, and April and, and everybody. And, and of course, he doesn't really know anybody's, but uh, I got to meet people. I, I had no idea Freddie was going to be there. Freddie from Blazing Nail Gun, get to meet Sterling Davis and, and all these other guys who I've only kind of heard their names in passing and I've seen their videos, but like the names never really stick because it, it just, you know, you see a video, you click on something inside the, the, the Facebook page that we're all involved in and you're like, oh, that's cool. But then when you give a name and a face and, you know, a personality attached to all this stuff, it, it all starts to stick. And uh, it was really just a, a wonderful chemistry all weekend. It was starting from the minute we got there. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. It was a lot of fun. And then the next day we go there and... Uh, I, we, I don't think anybody knew what to expect. I mean, April and, and Nick were, were both like, who knows what's going to happen? But, you know, the crowd started coming and it was just like a, a steady stream of people coming and going all day long. Yeah. So to give everybody who wasn't there kind of a picture of what, what was going on, Woodworking in America is a <clears throat> just a strictly old school woodworking conference. And I don't mean old school in like a negative way. It's just like it's been around for a long time. It, it's just a woodworking conference. And so there's classes but there's also this marketplace with um, you know where vendors come and they set up a booth and they can sell their tools, most of which were like hand planes and hand saws and things like that. There were a few power tool, a couple CNC machine companies, but the majority of our hand tools. And so um, a bunch of us uh, kind of YouTube people got together and rented a booth, and I think there were what maybe fifteen of us or. Yeah, there was. A, I knew everybody that was on the handout, but I was also happy to see other people that I didn't expect. And uh, so it was great to, to meet. There was maybe, if there was however many on the handout, maybe 12 people, there was at least 12 more people that mm-hmm. weren't on the yeah. handout that were there to just because they knew it was going to be a good event. And, you know, and they have a fan base as well. So I, I can only imagine that next year this, this is going to grow big. Yeah. So the group of us had this, uh, we got a booth and it was kind of like two tents worth. And we just had, we had a schedule and just, they had a bunch of, uh, sponsors donate some tools and different things for us to give away. So we had a few giveaways, but basically we were just there just to meet people and kind of sat around and yeah, like Jimmy said, we didn't really have any idea of how it was going to go or who was going to show up, but it was really gratifying because consistently the entire weekend, our space around our booth was just full, you know, like blocking the walkway kind of full. <laughs> yeah. And the, and I, and I I don't mean this as like we don't want the other people to succeed as well, but relative to the amount of traffic around the other the rest of the thing, it was almost dead everywhere except yeah. for our booth. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to you know thinking about it for a minute, Dave and I would drive him like if all of us didn't promote the show in our own channels in our own way, and talk about it. Of course, we talk about it the most here. Um, those people probably must have gotten some spillover traffic. I mean, I personally spent at least I spent about two thousand dollars at that show buying things so you know i mean the people there definitely had the benefit of us although some of them didn't seem to relate to what we were doing they were kind of confused <laughs> yeah, yeah they're like why does everybody want your autograph who are these people like, who, <laughs> you know, who are the people that want the autograph of the people i don't know sometimes i question like why do people want my autograph that's a weird thing to get my head around yet. <laughs> oh yeah this is totally. new to me so yeah there was a i, I overheard a conversation between uh, april and some gentleman that was just kind of walking through and he just kind of like, so what is this? What What is this booth about? And she tried to explain it to him and everything. And, and she made the comment that like, well, some of these people put out a, they do a woodworking project every week and then they put out a video on it. And he was like, what could you possibly do in a week? <laughs> uh, <these are> <laughs> I thought that like, was hilarious because, you know, he was just like, there's no way you could do anything worth anything in a week. That was his. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> even though he <laughs> didn't, funny. you know, in his mind, he didn't probably even think about the fact that we also have to edit and you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, somebody else stepped up and said, well, you know, mine are every two weeks. And he was like, oh, this is the guy I want to be talking to. It was just funny. It was a really good example of the mentality difference between like the older generation that was there for one thing and yeah. us kind of younger, more, uh, you know, social media savvy people who were there now. 
Um, it was just interesting. So it'll be really interesting to see going forward how those two worlds collide or merge yeah. or push yeah. away from each other. It's going to be like an amoeba. It's going to split. <laughs> it's yeah, because like. yeah, even the guy, the guys that was selling the concept saw, which I bought one right across the way from us, he's like, it was the end of the second day. And he goes, so what's going on over there? I was like, well, just walk over and say hello. I mean, there's 100 people to say hi to. I mean, there's 100 potential people over there that would buy your product. Come over and say hello. I didn't say that. Of course, I thought that in my head. But I just said, I go, oh, we're all video content creators for YouTube. And then he's like, oh, oh. And then he kind of went on to say, yeah, YouTube's kind of a big deal because they did the saw on Tested. Jamie in, uh, or uh, oh. Adam Savage yeah. did a, a little toll review. And then he said, Adam did the tool review. And then he wanted to set him straight. So he, had, he met up with Adam and set him straight for the right, gave him the right saw for the right application. And then they did a second video. And so he said, when the video aired, his sales spiked of course and uh so uh it was just funny how some people they they don't give youtube uh the presence of mind yet because it's still such a new medium in the in terms of promoting mm. anything whether it's woodworking or leather working or you know anything in the handmade crafts so yeah i think in general the population probably doesn't really have anybody who's not already a part of the youtube community and there's a million youtube communities right yeah but anybody that's not already a part of one of those probably doesn't really understand the potential reach that it already has as yeah. a platform and it's only going to get bigger but absolutely you know i think they probably just don't they just don't see it and they don't understand like why it can be so powerful yet you know yeah. but hopefully they will over time yeah no there's no doubt about it i mean we kind of had a, uh, a joking conversation, me and a group of the guys that were there, and we were all like one by one said, when did you cancel your cable? And I was like, last year. Oh, last year. I never had cable. You know, I, I canceled it a month ago. And there was like seven or eight of us, and we all went around, and everybody canceled their cable TV because yeah. it's just working, you know, because we're all just going through. Of course, Hulu brings us network television shows and, and Netflix, but, you know, the, the idea of going to like Discovery Channel or History Channel to watch these regulated shows, you know, every Thursday night or whatever is like so is like a dying is like a dying thing. And the idea of just picking up content whenever you want it from whoever is willing to provide it is definitely taken over. Yeah. So if you're a manufacturer of these tools, go ahead and keep wasting your money on uh, magazine <laughs> advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just joking. There are some great magazines and I, I do read a couple of them. But um yeah, I think uh, YouTube is is definitely the future. At least I hope so because I've got a lot uh, invested in it. So yeah, we got a lot riding on yeah. it. So be- <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely not going anywhere. But uh, the idea that we all got together this weekend—it was what was nice about it. It was just so organic and nothing seemed forced. Yeah, just the idea that getting to meet everybody in person and it was—it was like I was like we already knew each other. It was like right away. It was like we're instantly friends because oh, yeah. we've talked all year long on the chats and whatever else, and we've emailed from time to time. So it was—it yeah. was a really great energy. It's like when There's I hang out with you thing. guys, I know you so well from doing this and, yeah. and emails and everything. It's like, oh, these are these are just some of my best buds. It's like it's like you live around the corner. So when I see yeah. you, it's just like, hey, let's hang out, you know. Yeah, even like Steve Ramsey, you know, we I don't get to see Steve Ramsey. I saw him once in my life. Other than that, we ch- chatted through email, but before this weekend. And uh, you know, it was funny hitting with and then Steve hosted that event, which was kind of fun. Which was absolutely fun, rather. Yeah. Yeah. He did yeah, there a, were, a raffle. So there were, yeah, he did a uh, an event and had some raffle. Some people brought things that they had made, and we raffled them off. And uh, that money was going towards um, Make a Wish Foundation. The Make a Wish Foundation, yeah, yeah. And Raised I think they got a thousand dollars at least. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So, so there were a few a few events like that where we all kind of gathered together and hung out. And, you, know. you know what was cool, too, about those events is like because there was also fans there that just knew because they lived nearby or maybe they traveled to the city to come hang out with us. So wherever we were, it was a mix of us, the YouTube cre- creators, and then also fans that will never create anything but just totally identify with what we're doing. Yeah. So, so that was really cool, too. It was not at all any sort of exclusive thing like, you know, you're not allowed in or anything. It was just like open <laughs> and honest and cool the yeah. whole weekend. Yeah. So while I got a, a fun little little story. So while at the Steve Ramsey meetup, um, and I, I, I'm sorry if, if you listen to this, I, I don't know who you were, um, but I think he, I think he was the guy collecting the money for or, or selling the tickets for the raffle. But mm-hmm. he slipped me a hundred dollars and said, "I want you to buy a round of beers." 
And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. I don't want that kind of attention. Um, but he's like, you have to. So I took the money and I just, I called the waitress over and I said, I need $80 worth of beers. Keep 20 for yourself. And uh, and so lots of people thought that I bought them a beer, but I did not. <laughs> Somebody slipped me the money, uh, but it was a really cool thing. So there are some awesome, cool people out there for sure. Yeah, that was nice. The waitress came over and she said to our table, Bob, you sit with me. And she's like, Round of beers and like nobody. I was like, I'll have a sprite, I'll have a coke, I'll have water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody got any alcohol to take. <laughs> yeah, so she made a little extra on our uh, fountain <laughs> drinks there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was it was really cool because we got like like you said, Jimmy, we got to hang out with creators and just people who you know our audience, people that just like what we do. And there were so many instances of. Um, people that just came up and said, like, I never did whatever. I never did woodworking or I never did electronics or whatever until I started watching your videos. And then, you know, your stuff led me to so-and-so. And they would explain this kind of web that they had found of like, yeah, a lot of people did all that this to different me. content, which was, it was just amazing. And then, so as soon as I got there the first night, um, this guy, Tommy, hey, Tommy, if you listen, came up and um, just said, like, I'd never done any woodworking before. And I found one of your videos, which led me to April's. And then I got really interested. And, and so I made this box. That box was incredible. That, the box with the beautiful. headphones in it. Yeah, he made a headphone case. It was beautiful. It was maple with like a walnut inlay on the top. And he was like, this is the first like finished fine thing that I've done. And I was just like, wow. Man, this, this is awesome. And he yeah, said, I want you to sign it. I want your name on it. And I was like, no, it's gonna ruin, <laughs> I don't want to ruin. <laughs> it's going to ruin this beautiful thing. But it was, it was fantastic. It was a really big testament to like the influence that we can have because, you know, he now makes a lot of stuff, sells it. I think it might've even been his full-time job now to make like customized furniture, oh. kids furniture. Oh. I might be wrong about that, but you know, but then he, as a way to say thank you to all of us, he brought this box and had everybody that could put their name on top of it on this beautiful thing that he had created. So it was, it was really awesome to, yeah. it, you know, it made an impact to hear stuff like that. Yeah. At least on me, it made an impact. Oh, absolutely. Every single person I met, I tried to ask, like, what kind of stuff do you make or what do you do? And the most common answer that I got from everybody was, not from everybody, but the most common answer was, I'm just getting started. And that was yeah. really cool. Like, people are just getting started from watching all these content creators on, on YouTube. So, mm -hmm. that, was, that was really cool. I had a, a couple of uh, multi-generations. Actually, one, uh, a couple of fathers and sons. Definitely more than a couple. Like, three or four fathers and sons. And then this one crew, it was three generations. Father, son, and grandson. And they all watched the content which was great. <laughs> and, and then a couple of fathers and sons would tell me, I started watching and I told my dad and then my dad like kind of critiqued you and said, you're this or you're messy or that. But then in time, he started like kind of going back and watching it without me. So that was really nice. You know, kind of the, you know, the old school generation that this one guy in particular said, my dad, my dad was mad because you throw your tools. I said, I just do that so I have an edit point. But, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure he's listening because we, we've chatted already since we left. And uh and then his dad was there, and, and his dad complimented me. They, they were both very sweet. So. Yeah. And, and I want to say, like publicly, in case it hasn't been said anywhere else, just a big high five to April Wilkerson. Because yeah, for sure. she not only put on, it was a big part of putting on this whole thing, but she was there at the booth the entire time, losing her voice, but full of energy, and just just like really being proactive. I mean, it's got to be hard to be the only woman in a space in that room, you know, where we had just a huge amount of dudes and she was just there taking, you know, just taking full advantage of, of, you know, being able to do what she can do in the space that we're in. And, yeah. and, and Definitely. even like, um, so that guy, Tommy came up and said that, you know, his daughter, who's like four or five years old or something, just loves April and loves watching her videos and everything. And so she was even cool enough to record a little video to send to his daughter. And he said oh, man. his daughter was all shy, but then just freaked out, you know, after the video was over. So I think it's really awesome that um, she is where she is and she's able to put up with what she has to, you know, put up with on YouTube being in this space. But um, yeah. she's making an imp impact in the lives of a bunch of young girls who are watching this stuff with their dads. Absolutely. Even so, Taylor, and, I know Taylor watches, my girlfriend Taylor watches, and she's like, wow, that's really cool that a, a, a young woman like that would would do that. 
Yeah. So she's, you know, she's going places that we can't go. And that, I think that's fantastic. And she's great. So. Did you see the little kid show up that had my name spray painted on his shirt? Did you guys see that little kid? I think I ended up signing his shirt after. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> well, his dad made the stencil. His dad oh, told me he okay. cut the stencil. I didn't get I didn't spray paint his shirt. He showed up that way. Nice. And his dad had cut the stencil out. Oh. And uh, so I signed it and then of course so did a few other people. But I kept seeing the kid around the and his mom his mom said, When you're not he's so shy when you're talking to him. When you're not here, he's like all excited and animated. <laughs> but the minute you talk to him, he like clams up and gets all shy but the kid was cute I was like when you're old enough your mother's going to send you to New York and you're going to come work in my shop it's a good time. <laughs> nice yeah. you're and already said, recruiting yeah yeah and it was cool it was really cute it was very cute yeah so we got to we got to meet a lot of those uh, people that watch videos we got to meet um, a lot of other creators that we'd only talked to online Frank Howarth was there oh yeah Frank is a big inspiration of yeah. mine I love Frank I mean everybody loves Frank he, yeah. like, what's not to love about him and, you know, and aside from the fact that he makes great content he's also just a, such a sweet guy yeah so um, it's it great to get to meet him I don't even want to like start naming off all the people though because I know yeah. we'll miss people but there were a lot I'm just going to name creators. one name Kyle Toth. Okay. I love you, Kyle Toth. <laughs> oh, I wish Kyle was in the PSA. Oh, I wish man. Kyle had made it into the PSA. He has uh, yeah. so much fun at everything he does, and he's he's just so amazing. Like I love, love, love his work. So yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. He's a fun guy. He um one night we he and I were talking and he said, Man, I had a dream about you the other night. I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and I had a vision that you were on a morning show on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he was dead serious, totally dead serious. Oh, he's man. a lot of fun. The one thing so I love fun. about Kyle is because he, he's like so disciplined, obviously because of his expertise of woodworking and you know and his and his craft. But he to me he's like a skater kid that's kind of like you know like screw you to the mainstream. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he has this like Zen uh, skill set. Yeah, it's so it's such a dynamic you'd never see. It's like you're either a skater punk. And, you know, you're just a slacker and that's it. Oh, but he's like a combination of both. And he's like the best things of both, which is really fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's great. I mean, I know he's, he's, he's in his 20s and, and I'm in my 40s. So it's, it's nice to see, you know, somebody of that generation picking up the, the skill set like that. Yep. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, play like what he's doing and some of the younger creators than what we are. Um, well, hopefully kind of infiltrate, you know, the, that woodworking in america whatever that world is that maybe we can't reach or can't whatever you know i just hope that um they can make some headway on getting younger people involved and because you know a lot of the guys that were at this conference um extremely talented and it's possible that those talents won't get passed on to a lot of younger generation just because there's not enough exposure you know right yeah right these guys you know they're not they're, they're not native to new to youtube or they're not they're not rather they're not navigating or they're not uh, migrating to YouTube. Yeah, they're just doing their thing, and just the local people around them are watching what they're doing, and that's it. They're not recording what they're doing, and uh, so. Uh, but I think it's definitely, it's the. I I hope, and I'm pretty sure we made an impact on some of these older guys. They're probably like brushing <laughs> off their, their video cameras, and you know, looking at their VCRs, wondering, hmm, how can I get involved? <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. And I got to meet, uh, I, like I said, you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about him, Marco Trenisi. He's the guy who makes miniature miniature tools. And when it, when I say he makes miniature tools, he makes exact replicas of miniature tools. And he made a, a number 62 Lee Nielsen, Lee Nielsen plane. It's like a long jack plane with like a moving shoe. He made 25 miniatures, and I, I was compelled to buy one from him. I, I, he hasn't given it to me yet. He wants to finish the batch before he ships them out. But I said, I'm, I'm committed to buying one. It's a little tiny plane made exactly the way the big one would be made with all the same steel. And uh, just yesterday on his, on his Instagram feed, he has the, the plane making a really tiny shaving. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he, he, and on his little tiny workbench. That's his, like a little tiny woodworker's bench with a, with a little tiny vice <laughs> and, his, and his big hands making a, a little <laughs> jack plane curl coming out of the thing it's like paper you know it's like an onion skin it's super thin you know the way the way everybody wants it so um i was super psyched to meet him because he makes these tiny little things but he makes them exactly the way they would be made big and so he has to kind of problem solve how to make things small and obviously the scale is always exactly right on so we talked about perfection a couple of weeks ago or precision 
and he in, he inspires me to be more precise. I figured if I could try and strive for what he does, not necessarily tiny, but in the big world, I'll probably improve my my skill set a little bit. So, yeah, definitely. It was it was an honor to meet him. He had all of his stuff, and he had a sketch pad with him, and uh, he had a little he had examples of several things he he was working on. It was pretty incredible what he does. So check him out, Marco Trenisi. Instagram yeah. though only only on Instagram right now. Okay. Um, yeah. So do we have anything else we want to cover about? I, th- I think that's it. We've made all the people that weren't able to go feel bad now. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I I, I actually um, purposely did not tweet or post too much on Instagram while I'm there because I'm every, I'm sure everybody's social media feeds were just filled with WIA. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a break this weekend. So I posted like one photo of of Jimmy, and that was and that was it. Oh, that was awesome! I, I look like when Clinton was on the cover of like Esquire magazine. Ten years ago. <laughs> That's the I kind love of power you have. Yeah, thank you. That was I didn't even realize you took that picture. Yeah. I know you were kind of fiddling around behind Dave. I didn't realize you took that picture till I saw it, and I was like, wow, that is a cool shot. Oh, thanks. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. 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 So next next year, if we end up doing something like that, you know, go ahead and make your plans now to try to be. I mean, they haven't said where conference is going to be, and who knows who of us is going to be there or anything. But if there's a gathering like that, you know, I think it probably would be worthwhile to make the trip. So yeah. anybody listening, so for sure, yeah. And then a lot of people asking advice about how to start a YouTube channel, you know. So it was basically like an open forum of all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about what we're watching you guys watching anything cool i watched a bunch of stuff in the airport <laughs> <laughs> i heard you uh you cleared out your watch later list so i did it's been very long for a very long time and it's <laughs> well you had plenty of time so yeah. this channel is it's absolutely mind-blowing it is called how to make everything and so it's this dude and i don't know how he affords to do this but um he had a video that went super viral last week and it was called how to make let's see i'm looking like where is that at how to make a 1500 dollars sandwich in only six months and like he went and grew all the stuff he <laughs> needed <laughs> and and yeah. and uh slaughtered the chicken or whatever that is called and then uh i, I put that on the weekly wrap or what's it called now makers and shakers and then the video that he released today is called how to make a four thousand dollar suit in only 10 months and like he makes a suit and pants from scratch this is it stuff is insane you gotta check out this channel so good oh cool yeah very cool well i'm gonna give my spot i might have given it in the past but now that i got to meet him in person and we bonded over the weekend and we had a great time together freddie from blazing nail gun he's from east tennessee and he has a big giant cnc machine and he makes signs and he blogs a little bit about making stuff, but he's also a construction worker, a skilled carpenter, and a craftsperson. And so uh, check out Blazing Nail Gun on YouTube. That's Freddie. He's a super sweet guy. And uh, like I said, we got to bond. We, we've been bonding through the mail and stuff. So when we got to see each other, it was like meeting an old friend. And I was, it was really, really sweet. So, And then also, well, I also want to take this opportunity to tell everybody to watch David Welder's PSA. While we were there, yes. David pulled everybody aside one at a time. And asked them to do this little script, which is basically an anti-trolling PSA, which kind of turned into like a, it was really just a comic bit, which kind of, it has, has like serious overtones, but it's totally funny. And it was really well done. And David just posted it a couple hours ago. So good. Nice. Yeah. Um, and for mine, so there's um, a girl named Christina has a channel that she started a while ago. I remember when she started it uh, called Get Hands Dirty. And as soon as she put out her first video, it was like really well done, high quality, and she's everyone just gets better and better and better. Well, today she put out a new video about building a table for her X carve, and she sent it to me because she thought she said there's a, a bit of music in it you might like, and so she's building this table, and it's really well made table and everything, but it's just a utility table for the X carve. And then while she's doing part of the construction, she pulls out her ukulele and plays. A Radiohead song, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so she knows me well enough to know that I like Radiohead. So anyway, um, it's just, you know the video is just for this table. But the thing that I really like about her videos is that she does a great job with color grading. So there's a particular tone, visual tone to it. She's really good at editing. 
Um, she's just doing really good stuff. And I think her channel is relatively small. So it'd be great if she got some more attention and got some motivation to, conti- to continue doing what she's already yeah, doing. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, I guess that's probably about it for us this week, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We'll come back next week and hopefully, David, you will have made something. <laughs> I will. I promise. <laughs> he promised. I promise. Don't forget the name of your channel. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks for all yeah. the pressure you put on me, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just playing. <laughs> so if you're going to be in Atlanta uh, this this weekend, October 3rd and 4th, or 4th and 5th, one of those, sometime this weekend, um, I'll be there. I'm going to have a booth. It's right next to the Google tent. So if you can find the Google one, it should be easy to find. I'll be right next to it. Uh, come by and say hi. I'll have a bunch of stuff for my videos and my X- X-Carve, and I'll just be there hanging out. I'd yep. love to meet you. So, Yeah. Um, where can we find everybody? David? Make something.tv. Simple as that. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. New domain. Yes. JimmyDeresta.com, and I will definitely be at the Pittsburgh Maker Fair, 10th and 11th. I'm going to do... I'm going to do a workshop on both days where I'm going to have a hot glue gun and a pile of junk in front of me. We're going to talk about inventing and brainstorming. And then on, so, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to do a Q&A and a lecture. So oh. look, look for me on the schedule. Nice. I want to go to that. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And uh, cool. if you're at my sister's wedding next weekend, come say hello to me. You know, <laughs> Everybody's doing these events except me. So. <laughs> well, you should if set you- up a booth and like bring all your stuff and sell <laughs> oh, yeah. your bandsaw boxes at the, the wedding. Oh, yeah. She'd really appreciate that. She's already stressed <laughs> out and freaking out about the whole thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to be in my living room next week, come say hi. <laughs> yeah. um, all my stuff is at I like to make stuff.com as usual. And uh, yeah, next week we'll get back to topic related stuff. But that's it for this week. Talk to you guys later. Later. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>